Welcome to this episode of Chatting Shit. We've got uh, a number of different faces, um, several of which have never been on, on Matt's YouTube channel before. Uh, one of which I, I think has recently, Stuart, I think. Yeah, I've been on a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, none, none of the rest of us have, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, if you just want to take a moment, introduce yourself. Um, do you want to start, Ilya? Just hi. Yeah, hi, I'm Max Ilya. I'm from Germany. In Darmstadt, and uh, I'm approximately in the top 200 in Sylph. I've participated in all the Sylph showdowns up to now, not very well, but I have played them. <laughs> and I've been in the Gym Breakers lineup for Germany every single month we've joined for. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, a, a good pedigree, I'm sure. Um, Ash, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Ash, I'm from Peru. I haven't participated much in this um, this month in Silverina because of health. Uh, I'm the captain of Peru in Gym Breakers workout from since second edition of it. And uh, we have some good results a month and a long the month. But recently we faced a big wall called Germany last two months. Yeah, you, you, uh, you guys, you guys always seem to go up against Germany, and it, it's always a bit of a, uh, a, a tough one for you because they are a very, a very solid squad. And uh, yeah, but it's very, it's always very, very close. It's, it's a funny series. We start trash talking each other, and we <laughs> cheer everyone. So yeah, we have a lot of healthy banter. Yeah, yeah. It's always I have, to, I have to say, it's always a lot closer than I think it would be uh, when those ones start. Um, all right, and, and Stu, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Stuart, or Shpok789. I'm a regular battle in the UK, do tournaments, try and do them all around the country, basically, all, all remote ones. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this season's been uh, really good for me. I've cracked the top 200 and uh, participated, participated in my first uh, self showdown, which went really well last month. So uh, see what this month brings. Try and bring some more success. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, uh... I'm Alex, uh, Hawkeye117. Um, I've been doing self since season one, Boulder Cup. Uh, Travelled up and down the country. Uh, take a bit of a back step with remotes. Um, actively part of the Gym Breakers World Cup, but um, for the most part, I, t I tend to avoid online remote lobbies just because it's it's not the way I like to play. I like face-to-face -face tournaments, but that's the way these things go. So, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll dive straight in. So, uh, well, does anyone want to go first? No, nope, right. I'll go first then. Uh, hey. <laughs> my, my pick, my pick is Gyarados. Um, I can't for the life of me remember the Pokedex number. I know that's one thirty. One thirty. There we go. One thirty. I came prepared. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Well, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so Pokedex number one thirty. Uh, obviously, it's. I think it's quite a thrifty pick as well. It's it's quite cheap to power up. Um, obviously, expensive in the the evolution. Um, but cheap for a second move, which is always nice. Uh, obviously, you need the legacy move Aquatail on this. Um, so the move sets I'd be looking at obviously uh, Dragon Breath, Aquatail, and Crunch. Um, there is some spice where you could you could maybe try a Waterfall one, but I think you miss a lot of what the Pokemon's really going to be good at if you go with Waterfall. Um, and there is some some very niche cases where Outrage or um, a harder hitting Nuke move, should you ever actually get to it, is going to be useful. But for the most part, Aquatail and Crunch is going to keep you covered. Um, overall ranking in this month is it's 17. Um, it's a blue pick, which uh, I feel like we should mention now, just because obviously um, it, it's color sorted. Um, but yeah, it's the the real thing with this one is it's really good in a position where Dragon Breath is really good, and I think this cup is is one where Dragon Breath for the most part is is a really powerful move, um, especially when you've got a lot of shields in play. So where I think it's going to be really useful is either in um, a lead scenario where you've got a couple of shields in play and you've got it, you've got Dragon Breath down, or in the position of safe swap. Now, obviously, big weakness, Lantern, um, and I'm sure <laughs> we're going to see a lot of Lantern in this cup. Um, and to be honest, when you're looking at it and you're going, okay, are you are you fighting between? Uh, are, you, are you choosing and team building? Are you choosing between Quagsire or, or Lantern or Gyarados? You, you're probably going to want to go with something like Quagsire or Lantern, but 
I like being just a little bit different and I feel like it's it really suits my play style. Um, interestingly enough, uh, it picks up so 179 wins in the one shield. Uh, that will jump to 186 in the two shields. But that's just on neutral energy. If you get a one Dragon Breath lead, so just a single Dragon Breath off before they switch in, in the one shields that jumps to 202 wins, which is over over two thirds of the cup. Um, so it's it's 202 wins, 82 losses. That's a, a huge number of just relatively safe matches. And it's not that bad against Lantern in the one shields. It's it's a 400 or so rating, which it could be a lot worse given it's an electric move and it's a, a flying water type. Any uh, questions about it, really? Yeah, I was just saying with the, the Lantern matchup, Lantern takes a bit of a while to get going, so it doesn't really farm down immediately either. So uh, it's yeah, it's you can still really put some work in, the, in. It's really bad in the zero shields. Yeah, it's really it's bad in the two shields when Spark gets to do a lot. But if, yeah. if you match it on the one shields, Crunch is a really powerful move, and Dragon Breath just does a ton of damage. Yeah, just just shield that Thunderbolt. You know yeah. it's coming. It's not going to be anything else. <laughs> so. no, nobody craves anything. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe maybe he baits with a Hydro Pump. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think Wincy got is one of his hard counter as he can yeah. resist that drum breath and Echo Tail and Crunch. Yeah, so Wincy Wim should Wimsicott farm down. Is... Wimscott's a really powerful answer to it, um, which obviously Ilya is going to be talking about in a moment. But um, we'll, we'll move to that. We'll move to that shortly. Um, just a couple of notable wins that it picks up. Um, so in the one shield, uh, it will obviously beat Kingdra, which is I think a really other powerful safe swap. Um, yeah. It beats the it beats the big bad Talonflame. You know everybody <laughs> everybody's going to have a Talonflame. Yeah. Expect to see it all over the place, but it, it does beat Talonflame it's pretty straightforward as well um other safe swaps it actually beats snorlax in the one shields and it beats um pelipper so anything that you sort of uh, traditionally go oh this is a good safe swap it actually tends to beat it so if you're both safe swapping or if you're safe swapping and they're swapping in response to that gyarados is a really powerful pick um interestingly enough it does actually beat shiftry although that's only in the one shields you wouldn't think that's, it. Because, that's nice. Yeah, um, yeah. Because Leaf Blade does hurt. Be aware sure. of that. Um, and Driftlim is an, it's a dependent one. You have to land the Crunch, or it's either they have to land the Shadow Ball, or you have to land the Crunch. If they don't land a Shadow Ball, if they're just icy winding you, you will win straight Aqua Tail. But if they have the ability to throw a Shadow Ball and you haven't thrown a Crunch, you lose that one. So it's it's a bit awkward on that, but it's other than that, it's it's fairly straightforward. Notable two shield wins, and I know I'm going to get some IRA raises on this one. Is have a look at the Quagsire matchup because Gyarados actually wins in two shields against Quagsire. Yeah, I actually know that one pretty well from Vortex. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very <laughs> independent because uh, Quagsire can actually win it when it gets to the third Stone Edge, but it yeah. usually doesn't. It's 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 super IV dependent. But if somebody's got a, if, if you've got an attack break point on the Gyarados, you'll easily yep. win it. Um, if you've got a little bit of energy lead as well, because uh, it's like one turn will set it off. But if you get a turn extra, then they need to get an additional mud shot through kind of thing. And obviously with the, the state of the game at the moment, the way uh, sneaking fast moves work, um, that's, that's obviously quite unreliable, but uh, if you can deny your opponent's fast move sneakings, um, you can actually win that, and it becomes a because Quagsire obviously the whole point of it is it's a great uh, safe swap. It deals with flyers all the time. Um, it earthquakes anything that that doesn't fly, um, and the fact that it does beat that is is really really powerful. If it's got good IVs, it will also pick up the Gliscor matchup uh, because of the Aqua Tails, um, and again good IVs and it'll pick up the Pelipper matchup and the two shields. So some really powerful Pokemon that you'll expect to see across the whole thing. Um, and, and Gyarados is a good answer. The other the other final thing that I think I can say about Gyarados, so when I went and, and built the first draft of my team that included Gyarados, I went and looked at everything that was commonly being used. Um, and it's like, you know, um, that graph that's been put out, um, the top <laughs> six most used Pokemon. Yeah, by YTX Pikachu, like, I think it was. Yeah, that one. Yeah. 
I looked seen at that, that one a few times. <laughs> I looked at that. Now, if you look at those six Pokemon, Gyarados is really, really powerful against those six Pokemon of all, all the different colors. Yeah, that's so it's, true. So it's it's one of those ones that I think it's just going to have a lot of play here. Um, yeah. And I, th I think really it's just about how you're gonna how you're gonna prepare it and what you're gonna put it in with. And I think actually um, if you're gonna pair it with something, Ferrothorn is a really powerful one to pair it with. Ferrothorn covers off a lot of its weaknesses, and it covers off a lot of Ferrothorn's weaknesses. Yeah, especially those pesky fire types. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> and fighters as well. Well, exactly. Anything that uses counter isn't going to enjoy... Uh, with the exception of Lucario in the two shields, if it double baits you with power-up punch. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I never trust the Sims when it comes to a power-up punch matchup. You have to go in and have a look at it because it's so bait dependent and it, mm. if they throw early, then they lose counter damage. If they throw late, then you shield it and it, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, but mm -hmm. so with the exception of Lucario in, in even Actually, those scenarios Lucario but... and the two shield should be charge move timing dependent because you need yeah. 20 turns for two power up punches and then 16 more for the shadow ball yeah. so that's 36 turns and uh, Gary needs 35 for three aqua tails but so rem if you remember to Lucario is quite squishy and Gyarados is quite attack weighted I'd imagine those yeah, dragon breaths true. are hunking quite a lot <laughs> Exactly. So, if you are actually able to move you, to time your charge moves so they CMP, then yeah. there is no chance for it uh, to even with two baits get to the Shadow Ball. Then, yeah. Well, th th there you go. Then, so in the two shields, that's just how you play that matchup out. Um, but I suppose that'll be one that I learn a little bit more. Now, obviously, there are some really, really hard counters to it. You you don't like to see Prova pass, um, but. I'll be honest with you, so I ran Gyarados a lot in Vortex. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't steal Ilya's team. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've um, been running Gary all month and I was... absolutely loved its performance. I'm really happy so with good. it. It was basically the only real hard check to Primate because the close combat does like 60%, but that's yeah. fine because the counters don't do that much. And even yeah. boosted, they still have the same DPE as your uh, Dragon Breaths. Men mental mental isn't it but um i've been locked into a couple of prover pass and i'll tell you what aqua tails hurt like they yeah. add up yep. and yeah you're not going to win that matchup but it's normally prover pass matchups are really rock paper scissors and they're really i win by like 800 on on a sim kind of yeah. thing and it's a lot yeah, closer than that it's really nice yeah yeah I don't think I've been ever paired with my Gary against the Probo Pass, but I've been paired against a few Crustles. Yeah. And <laughs> those don't really take the Aqua Tail, especially with the Dragon Breaths. You can easily win over Switch Advantage if they just take the Aqua Tail to the face if, and you if can they just don't shield, go for the yeah. Dragon Breaths. Yeah. yeah. Fusing Crustle. Yeah. yeah, if you're using Crustle, you want to be shielded as Aqua Tails. Yeah. No, I, I, I use Crustle, Crustle a lot. To also not be yeah. that rare uh, Prismatic Cup because it's a good. A rat option that isn't a fire type and it beats all those pesky fire types. It's so, it so good against Talon Flame, regard, isn't it? Very good. Yeah, it absolutely, <laughs> it absolutely destroys it. It just annihilates them. We, we, di we digress a little bit off. Uh, none of us have suggested Crustle. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We'll, we'll, we'll bring That's this up true. to them and, uh, and say that we should bring this in the next in, a, in another episode of Chatting Shit or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all I right. I was just going to say, quick final word on Gyarados. You mentioned it had a, I think, one shield win against Kingdra. I think that's really nice. I don't know how many Kingdra we're going to see, but Kingdra is normally so good in the one shield. So I think the fact that it has that win is is quite impressive and shows how how good Gyarados is. So for me, the Kingdra matchup again. The problem with Kingdra is that it takes up a blue slot, which means it takes up your Lantern, your Quagsire, or in my case, your Gyarados, um, and that I think makes. It's really got to be good, and you've got to build your team around it. But it's super effective Dragon Breath against neutral Dragon Breath. Even with neutral Dragon Breath with Stab, that's super effective Dragon Breath, and it just crunches through it. And yeah, fine, throw the Aqua Tails, but you get to the Aqua Tails faster than the Oct Octazookas or the Outrages, but they're never throwing the Outrage at you. So it's it's a one shield and just absolutely Dragon Breath and down, basically. Yeah. And it's, it's a really nice situation, especially because... Honestly, in my, my opinion, I see Kingdra on an opposing team at the moment. I know that they're going to try and use that as a safe swap because you see it in Go Battle League, you see it in the last cup, you see it all over the place. Kingdra is a really powerful safe swap. 
And if you can wall their safe swap off with something that is safe for you as well, which means if you need to switch into it, great, but will also beat that safe swap. It's a really, really powerful one. Um, anyway, right, we'll, we'll leave uh, we'll leave Gyarados uh, there. And uh, who wants to go next? I will pick I someone at random if you don't if you don't choose. <laughs> I think it's actually pretty good uh, to go from Gary to Whimsicott. Yeah. I think, I think we do is go one to those, Whimsicott next, yeah? Whimsicott yeah. is one of those hard answers to Gary. Like, Gyarados cannot do anything to it. No matter the moveset, <laughs> no matter what it does, it just cannot do anything against Whimsy. It just you gets know what? farmed down. In the main series games, Gyarados can learn Fire Blast, and that would do something. <laughs> That's true, but not in Pokemon Go. No, so, I wish. <laughs> but also... So on the one hand, Gyarados does get hard countered by Whimsy, but on the other, it actually gets paired up with Whimsy amazingly. Because yes, they have this shared weakness of uh, Probopass, but as you said, Aqua Tails hurt, and then the fire types, which are the fire types and the poison types, which are the worst weaknesses of Whimsy, they get either neutral matchup by Gary, which isn't that great usually, because Gyarados hits a lot of. It hits a huge amount of damage with Dragon Breath and is very spammy with the Aqua Tails. And the fire types basically don't have any play against it. So they pair up each uh, they pair up very well even though one counters the other. So it's also a bit of RPS with the grass water and fire types obviously, where so it only makes sense that they would pair up very well. Obviously, as everyone has seen, Whimsicott is number one in the rankings right now. And uh, it's actually a very intriguing Pokemon in this meta because not only is it very good in general, but it has a lot of IP dependent matchups. So, for example, Gligar with Return, it was shown for, for some reason, but against Return, uh, Gligar, there's a breakpoint which then uh, leads to even if it baits, it doesn't get to the return, so you can kill it. And against Blaziken, for example, if Blaziken has a one counter advantage, it dies with the second Blaze Kick ready, so it still cannot get to the two. So you, can't, you, can't, always... you certainly can't switch in a Blaziken, but if you switch in a Whimsicott and a Blaziken, you will beat it, basically, if you're quick with it. Yeah, the problem is uh, rank one from Blaziken, if you face a Whimsicott that actually hits the breakpoint, which isn't that hard to hit, like the tw my rank 27, which is rank one weather boost, it still hits it. And if you hit it, then it's... Uh, so basically, if it has full HP, then it dies with the second place kick ready. And if it has one counter worth an of an advantage without taking any damage before, it die it has one HP. So it never gets to the second place kick, basically no matter how much energy it had before. Uh, so if you don't uh, farm down a Shiftry or something like that, before that, you just won't be able to beat Whimsy. So that's a very positive matchup for it, and I do think that a lot of people will run uh, Blaziken as their fire type because it's a fire because uh, it's a fighting type as well. So it gives you that extra coverage. Also with Stone Edge, it beats the other fly. It can beat the other fire types against Talonflame, for example. It can beat it oh, straight Blaze Kick in the two shield if you time your moves correct. Stone Edge on, on uh, Talonflame though. Yeah, it's so it satisfying, is, is and then Drifloon as well. So, <laughs> and uh, do you know what else really doesn't like taking the Stone Edge? Um, Jumpluff. From a blaze that's pin. true it, it does a lot although, of damage although to be fair jump fluff doesn't like a blast burn either or brave no. bird or blaze kick it really doesn't <laughs> like any of the moves to shield to like, shield it's like focus blast but nobody I can got arrest focus memories. yeah <laughs> I, so, i'd be lying yeah. if i said i'd be lying if i said my original team didn't have a blaziken in it for exactly the, that reason is that it's a fire type with counter and it, it would make it really difficult to come across uh whimsicott actually looking at my original team um, I was also running Shiftry, which means that I was just going to get owned by Whimsicott. <laughs> um, because I, that's the other thing. How many other Charmers do we have in this meta? Not many. I think we have Granbull, Dalcaddy or something like that, and that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, I, I don't feel like Charmers. using Dalcaddy, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and you're missing Leopard, the dark type. Yeah. Is Leopard allowed though? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, I think it is. I think, let me um, group for it. Okay, we have Granbull, we have Dalcatty. Yeah. We have yeah. Whimsy, obviously, which is amazing. We have Gothitelle, which also learns Charm, but uh, I always no forget Gothitelle learns. I always forget Gothitelle learns Charm. Um, and I pr basically know all the movesets, so once I see a Pokemon, I can tell you if it has <laughs> Charm or not. Galate. Galate also, yeah. Good point. Yeah. 
I always think of Gallade as confusion. I never think of it as charm. Well, but it I happen. mean, people yeah. people were running charm Gallade in. Uh, we have Guard War, we? we have Guard yeah. War. We have Toge Kiss as well. Okay, so there are, there are actually a few a few yeah. Um, we also why... have uh, Esper's evolution. Meowstick. Oh, yeah, Meowstick nice. exactly, which also has charm, if I recall correctly. I I haven't evolved one, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, have... Why why choose Whimsicott over another Charmer if it is effectively because of the charm damage that it's doing? Why is why it's is not Whimsicott only better? because of it? <laughs> it has uh, two more reasons. One of Go which on. is it, the grass typing. You okay. you have charm, and you're still a hard wall to most water types like Gyarados, Lantern. They don't do anything against you. They just get charmed down with neutral damage, even though you aren't a grass type, so to speak. Then Quagsire obviously has play with Sludge Bomb, but I, I don't expect depending on the dive, Sludge Bomb I think on Quagsire. Would, I actually don't expect to not see any of them. Really? Because there is a lot of grass types in the meta, and basically everyone is going to have one. So okay. it does make sense to run Sludge Bomb. You still, I think you still should win uh, things like Talent Flame if you don't get Brave Bird. And Stone Edge, of course, it's very good against stuff like you will get walled by Drift Bloom if you don't have Stone Edge. But Sludge Bomb gives you that extra coverage against yeah, Whimsicott, for example. I, if I was running Sludge Bomb on a Quagstar, I'd probably be looking at Stone Edge and Sludge Bomb. Um, <laughs> that would, that would also be interesting, but then again, you get uh, completely walled off by Flygon. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like this dilemma, dilemma you have very often when a Pokemon needs free charge moves, but it only it's can the have to... It's the Azumarill yeah. syndrome. Yeah, the Azumarill <laughs> for example, or Hypno, where you always want, like, yeah, okay, these two punches would be very good. But Mew. what the hell do I do in the mirror if I don't have Shadow Ball? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of Pokemon have that, and uh, it happens to be one of them. Okay. Um, all right. Actually, to be fair, even up against a Progopass, Progopass doesn't like taking Grass Knot from uh, Whimsicott, does it? Yeah, it still that's does, true. It still I, does a fair I chunk. quite a few G-Fisk against Whimsicott matchups. Uh, not exactly <laughs> Progopass, but it's somewhat similar. I think we... Can, if it has Magnet Bomb, then it's obviously not comparable and it's horrible matchup. <laughs> but against G Fisk in GBL when I played Whimsy, it wasn't that bad because it doesn't two hit you with Rock Slide. Much Hots don't do damage. Earthquake is also resisted. So yeah. even with the charm, you still have play against the Steel types, which is just amazing. So for, for me, if we see Magnet Bomb on a Probe Pass, I think we'll be seeing Rock Throw Probe Passes. Because I think for, for me, if I'm running Probe Pass with Rock Throw, it's running. Magnet Bomb for a quick-ish charge move and Thunderbolt um, just for the coverage on it, if that makes sense. So if if that's the case, it is going to be a bit of a hard wall to it. But again, if if you build your team around it, it's going to scare off the Prover Pass anyway, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Also, Rock 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 because of the Dalen Flame. Uh, yeah. Rock yeah. through for Dalen Flame because yeah. everyone is gonna have in that slot a Dalen Flame or a Fire type. Yeah. So you need to handle with it. If you go with Provo going a Spark One, you will receive a still neutral damage of the Incinerate. So it's better to fast move on the Dalen Flame man and keep the charm moves. To the next Pokemon. Yeah, that's that, that's that's fair. So I think we'll, in my opinion, that means that we'll see Rock Throw Probo with Magnet Bomb, which makes it a little bit harder for Whimsicott. But again, you you take that into consideration. So you said you wanted to pair it with Gyarados. Yeah, I think what Gary would, uh, Gyarados will at least make sense. But I don't think I'm gonna go for Gary in the slot <laughs> one because it's just like I've looked at the matchups. I was afraid of running into Whimsicott, of running into Probo, of running into Lantern, or anything else really. Like, yes, it has a lot of good coverage and good, a, a lot of good matchups, but the ones that are bad are just so bad that I'm so I'm afraid to attacked. run into them. I'm feeling attacked here. <laughs> we both know if there's anyone here who loves Gary, it's me. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Um, Especially after Vortex now. What else? <laughs> What what else would you pair it with then? What's what's going to make a actually, good core for? I've actually stuff? looked at Empoleon, because okay. Empoleon has play against. It obviously beats all those uh, fire types. It 
absolutely destroys Probopause if, you, if it doesn't run Spark, and it destroys it as well if it doesn't run Spark Thunderbolt. Because you resist, you double resist Magnet Bomb, and you still resist Rock Slide, and you hit with super effective Waterfall damage. Then uh, Shiftry, you can tank a hit still, and Whimsy still completely destroys it. Whimsy also covers for those fighters, which are Empoleon's biggest weakness, I'd argue. Um, yep. Mud Boys as well. Empoleon actually even has play against Quacksire. Because if you don't get Earthquake, it just won't do any damage to you, except that's, for the fast moves. That's Same like for the uh, Empoleon Swampert matchup uh, that I play yeah, a lot in, in yeah. GBL. Um, Hydro Cannon just doesn't do much because it's resisted. <laughs> it's it's and... a funny matchup because nobody seems to know how to play it. Like the Swampert players yeah. are just like, oh, I'm going straight for Hydro Cannon. It's like, no, no you, go for, you go for Earthquake and just shield up a, a Hydro Cannon. Um, and the Empoleon player, if you're on the other side, they always go like drill pack. You're like, no, no, just just go straight Hydro Cannon. Yeah. Trust me, just go straight Hydro Cannon. Yeah, Hydro Cannon is so busted. Yeah, also, it's a pretty, it's a broken um, move. for example, Hypno, if it doesn't run double punch, if it doesn't have thunder punch, then it's basically countered by Empoleon. But if it doesn't have ice or fire punch, then Whimsicott has a lot of play against it. And if it's not got Shadow Ball, then it's uh, losing the mirror match. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which no, no, nobody likes to put Pokemon into their team that actively loses the mirror match. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, uh, so my pick is uh, it's Pokemon it's number 89, but we're going Alolan because it's Alolan Nuck. I like so, it. I like it. Yeah. So uh, I go on for Alolan Nuck because I think it's just a very good, safe, solid pick in this cup. Uh, I think the. I was thinking the meta could go quite RPS because you've got a uh, blue slot which may well be a water, you've got the red slot which might be a uh, fire. So I just thought you might want something to break things up a bit, a good, a basically a, a good, say, swap. Yeah. And the other thing which really appealed to me about Alone and Mark is it's a very strong answer to Hypno because I, <laughs> I think Hypno might end up being the one we see the most of this cut. It's very early days, it's hard to tell that, um, but I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Hypno, so I definitely wanted a real like hard stop to it. Put, put your money where your mouth is there. Uh, we'll, we'll make a, a proper bet on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, end, yeah. end of the cut, end of the cut, most used Pokemon, Hypno. Uh, how much are you going to put on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm really not sure, but I, I definitely think Hitno is going to be up there for sure. So it, it's, uh, it's going to be fair. Sometimes, sometimes the best model in the cup is not the most used. I will argue that. That is so, that is true. That is true. Yeah. For, for all of Matt's, for all of Matt's impressionable young viewers, um, we don't encourage gambling. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. But yeah, do you want to carry on with uh, Alona Mutt there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I just think it'll be a really safe, strong pick, and it's got uh, good options against a lot of the meta. And in the limited practice I've done, I've actually found myself clicking Dark Pulse quite a lot. I've not yeah. really needed the Sludge Wave very often. It's those persistent Dark Pulses which add up against a lot of things. There's so, not um, a lot of things. There's not a lot of things that resist it. Is the problem, mm. and there's very little that hits effectively for super effective at it. You know, when I say effectively, I mean efficiently. Um, yeah, for super effective against it because you don't really like bringing in Quagsire against it because you're having to get to Earthquake. You're going to take a ton of damage from the Dark Pulses. Yeah, um, if they shield, you know what I mean. It's it's just an awkward match. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I remember that match. from Marsh as well because we've yeah. seen Amok a lot in Marsh, and yeah. at least I've been running Quagsire all Marsh month, so I've played out that matchup quite a lot, and. I actually found uh, AMAC to be quite good against it because if you get an, a good energy lead, <laughs> those yes. two dark pulses get it Snarl very is, low. Snarl is mental, and if you're sneaking, if you're sneaking yeah. fast moves through, um, you just can't can't fight it, can you? Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, this is this is what I just thought it'd be a it'd be really strong solo pit. I used it in Voyager, and it's really good for me there. Yeah. And Sorcerer, I think most people used a lot of luck in Sorcerers back in the day. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I just I just think it will work really well. I mean, Sludge Wave, ironically, it's probably for a Uenzi pop down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to say Sludge Wave is basically that. only there for Whimsy and the fighter type fighting types because everything else just doesn't like the Dark Pulses. Yeah, but a the, lot. Um, of... Yeah, sorry, go on. A lot of the fighting types are relatively squishy, though. Um, That's I mean, true, Lucario but Dark Pulse doesn't like still doesn't. Dark Pulse. Um, yeah, but it doesn't really care for it, because the Snarls don't do damage. But, yeah. Well, yeah, no, that's fair. Hang on. If we, but uh... Lucario is a pretty... Lucario is basically the worst example. 
Yeah. Well, Harry is the only one who double resists Slush Wave. Well, yeah, of course. Ask Emily as well, obviously, that's... but. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, you will throw Dark Pulse uh, only because uh, Slush Wave uh, is double uh, resistant. It's even worse. I think uh, Gliscor is one that can handle very good uh, Alon and Mock. Because yep. EQ can one shot a Alon and Mock and can resist very well the Dark Pulse. So you yep. don't have to shield it. It's a it's a um, tanky Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Gotta land the earthquake though. Gotta make yeah. sure you land the earthquake. Uh, yeah, that's it that's the same with a lot of the Blizzcon yeah. Blis- Blis- matchups when you when you think about it. Um and but he- just just having a look, so against Lucario, for example, um a Dark Pulse does fifty damage. To put that into perspective, Lucario has hundred and ten to start with. Um up against a Blaziken, which is the other the common fighter that I think we're gonna see. Um, Dark Pulse will do 52, um, which is, again, about as much. So nothing really likes taking two Dark Pulses. Um, and if you've got a Snarl, two Snarls energy lead before somebody switches in, it's going to hurt. And I don't think there's anything that's really going to come in and punish you too hard for switching yeah. into a Lola Muck. Well, this is the thing. It's the typing of Lola Muck. It's Poison Dark. Oh, but terrible. I think it's real strength. It's, the, it's a Dark type. That is resist that is neutral with counter and is neutral with charm. I think that's very critical in this cup potentially. Yeah, if we think yeah. about it, I think it's only yeah. weakness is ground. Is yeah, only weakness is ground, ground, correct? Ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and ground just doesn't resist dark. It's not something you farm down either. I mean, I mean, the ground moves the most yeah. shots and they're not doing very li- the, the, very little anyway. Thing, the the only time you'd ever farm it down is if you had something with mud slap realistically, and that's it's just not. Not when do you see happen. mud slap? You don't see it very often, do you? Ex- Excadrill before it got mud shot. Golurk. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. It's not like Golurk has an alternative. Yeah. Astonish is not even a move. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not worth it, but yeah. Um, what would you pair a Lola Muck with then? I think possibly a flyer to okay. get rid of, uh, basically to deal with all the uh, fighting traps. I mean, the obvious one is Talonflame. Um, and then <laughs> I think oh, also oh, maybe sorry, if... that was too obvious. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe maybe a, a fighter as well would work. I think um, uh, it's just to deal with a few maybe steel types which are lurking around. I'm actually possibly this is one idea that came to me. Pseudo Widow might might be a nice one this cut. Yeah, I like Pseudo Widow. I like yeah. Pseudo Widow with that. Um... Yeah, I honestly think Pseudo Widow would be one of the more common. Uh, counter uses because it beats it can easily beat Talonflame Charizard what and what uh, sure it takes super effective counter damage but it doesn't take uh, super effective damage from Vimsicott for example uh, are you worried yeah. about the double weakness to ground there though if you're if you're pairing those two together um, if you've got a flyer then yeah. uh, maybe oh, if you've got a flyer no but if, you're, if you're pairing yeah if you're pairing Pseudo Wudo with a Lola Muck, you're sort of going, please, please yeah. bring Quagsire against. Me. Honestly, what I just thought of is uh, Amok is actually also a pretty good pair with Gyarados. All right, yeah, because <laughs> it also Everything beats those well with Gyarados. Types. It yeah, beats those get ready, types. So right, we've got we've got my team so far is uh, Gyarados and a Lola Muck. <laughs> I've got to choose between a Lola Muck and uh, Whimsicott, haven't I? They're both uh, green black. Yep, mm. Amox. I think Amox problem here is that it takes away your Whimsicott slot. Yeah. And I think that Skuntank might actually be better because of it. Because first was of gonna, all, Skuntank, I was ask Skuntank casts Poison Jab, so it can farm down Whimsicott completely. <laughs> no yeah. problem. It's, it's harsh. That being said, and also, Skuntank it only takes away your Purple and Gray slot. And I think it's only really important for Driftblim, Gliscor mostly. And it's not Skuntank. as bad to lose that, I think. Skuntank still doesn't like taking Whimsicott's charms, though. Yeah, you do a lot of damage back, but charm you know, really does chunk energy, at though. you. But charm does chunk you. It, it does mm. hurt. Yeah, um, but you know, with damage. over a third of HP and 70 energy, you can basically throw two charge moves at no matter what comes in. Yeah, by back to back crunch, isn't it? It's almost crunch, you're crunch missing two. You're missing two poison, two poison jabs, jabs for it. Yeah. Depending on IVs, you miss uh, two or three of them. Because if you're both rank one, then you need one more poison jab to KO the whimsy, so you go with 77 energy. Time, time and if when it's better default, to have a you go bad with 70. Rank whimsy. <laughs> Honestly, like... whimsy is very intricate regarding IVs. Because I've looked, I have two whimsy cots ready, to, ready to go. One is rank 10, 
and yes. the other is rank 27. But the rank 10 is 215.15 and the rank 27 is 412.15. Yeah. And it just... <laughs> I've looked at all those matchups like Blazik and Blygar, etc. And it makes so much of a difference. Because there's so many break and bulk points that are even intertwined between those two just... Not even default IVs, but rank 10 and rank 27 are already like basically a different Pokemon. Yeah. It's ridiculous. All right, moving moving back towards uh, Alola Muck, um, rather than back <laughs> towards Whimsicott. <laughs> <laughs> too far, too far. So we're, we're we're looking at pairing it with a flying type to to deal with with counters. Um, realistically, looking at it as a safe swap, or, or would you would you consider it more yeah. of a closer? I mean, I, it can do either, but I think a, a safe swap is where its real strength lies. But I, I, like I say, the thing about Alola Muck is I just feel it's a very flexible one. You can kind of use it in any position. That's I feel like it's just very easy to get into a team, do, do its work, and then, you know, it, it, it can be with all sorts of things. Yeah. And, and just go, oh, yeah, no, this beats this, this, this. Here you go, go do go do that, basically. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's what I like. I like, I like something which can do multiple things. It's actually yeah. Over on this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things, things can do more than one thing. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> No, see, I mean that's the philosophy that I've been keeping for for years now. Is how how much can this one Pokemon do? How much utility can I get out of it? Yeah. Um, I think that even though its typing is, I mean, its typing is a huge asset here. Yes. Um, Snarl is a fantastic move, just so quick to generate energy. And the the three turn moves at the moment, you can sneak in an extra turn here and there so easily because people are miscounting they're yeah they're throwing a mud shot and and you're throwing a snarl and then they throw their fast their charge move straight away and you get one turn off your snarl kind of thing and you that's fine or they throw a second mud shot and then throw and you've got a whole two turns on your snarl um but that's that's sort of it's it's a really strong thing to have at the moment i'd yeah. be a little concerned that the poison move isn't as fast you know what i mean mm -hmm. um Particularly uh, because if, if a Whimsicott does come in, again, that is going to hurt. Yeah. Just... I mean, I've, I've not fought many Whimsicott yet, yes. so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll happen one day, but a lot of the time I'm just clicking the Dark Pulse and it's... it's... Yeah, the amount of times you don't need to go for such wave has been quite limited so far, but maybe I that'll mean, happen more as the month goes on. So, so. If, we look at, if we look at basic... Basic IVs, uh, not maxed out, just, just basic IVs. In one shield scenario, um, Muck lives on two HP, and that's assuming that they shield the Dark Pulse bait. Yeah, actually, I, uh, I think it was the Halloween Cup from GBL, yeah. where I've played Amok. So I played a lot of uh, Amok Charm matchups, and depending on whether the opponent gets the sneak in or not, you can easily just go straight Sludge Wave. Yeah. If they do, you're screwed, but like, they need to get the sneak in. And if they don't, you can just win the one shield straight sludge wave, no problem. And honestly, you lose the two shield regardless. So in, in fairness there's... here, if you maximize the if you maximize the IVs, it is a lot better and you win the one shield just straight just straight sludge wave. Um, so disregarding sneak ins and anything. Yeah, just just straight Okay. Throw, fine, whatever. Either you, you deny their move or you both sneak one in or whatever. Um, that being said, Charm always sneaks through. Have you noticed? I, it doesn't I've... always, but like Charm is super frustrating it, when it does. It, cause... Al it always charms past your defenses and just sneaks one extra through. I've, I've, I've very rarely ever denied a, a Charm through. I think the most, I think the biggest problem with Charm is that the animation comes in so late. Yeah, that so might, that you're might like, be. hooray! I didn't get a far, I didn't get sneaked in, and then one second later, oh fuck me! <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. fair. Uh, but I definitely get that one. Um, but yeah, I, but you still lose the two shields on that one. Um, now, if you think that you're having a poison type on your team to deal with Whimsicott, for example, um, that's that's not great that it can just two shield and farm you down. Admittedly, here you don't have to shield in that scenario. Like if you force the one shield, they are forced to two shield to to farm you down. So you come out of it with an energy advantage. But the amount of health left on that Whimsicott is gonna hurt. Mm. Like, do you, do you pair do you pair it with something else in that case? Do you try and pair it with Probopass, perhaps? 
I mean, Promo Pass, we touched on, has very hard wins or loss ratio. Yeah. And that, I, I, I don't know if pairing Promo Pass kind of takes away the advantage you get with using a Lola Muck. And it right. also adds to the ground weakness. I mean, it's a multiple I'll, weak to grounds. I'll pivot here so, then. I'll pivot here. Talonflame. Talonflame, great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you mentioned Talonflame. I mean, so, yeah. You lead, you lead Talonflame. Uh, you safe swap a muck. Um, you do that little bug that uh, is. I don't know if it's still going, but you throw in a flame charge. You do the bug thing, and it comes back in and boosts the attack. You win, right? Oh my word! I oh, have to silly. now do not understand how that would work. <laughs> I've tried different things, and I do not understand how you. I know get how it. it works. I know how it works. <gasps> I will not tell you now. I will tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I didn't do it in Go Battle League. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just because my team was the team at the time was Talonflame, Vigoroth, and um, Ferrothorn, and I just safe swap. I fire off a flame charge, safe swap Vigoroth, body slam them, bitch. Be like, okay, cool. Oh, it's back it. Oh, yay! And uh, my my baby. team would absolutely be afraid of yours. I mean, it's not my team anymore. I got absolutely spanked. It's better that way because my Great team get abs <laughs> gets absolutely swept by Talonflame. I've had that happen. I've had that happen. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> We're, I'm we're running Diggers D, Galf, and Skarmory, so I have zero what? play against Talonflame. Why? Why? Um, all right, it we works will... pretty well. I'm very happy with it, besides when I run into Talonflames. <laughs> we will move away from that. Which isn't, we will, uh, which we'll carry on with the Prismatic Cup chatting shit, because that's what we're <laughs> supposed to be here for. That's what we're um, here for. We'll, what we'll do, we'll, we'll talk to Matt about it, though, and see if we can get, get a, a, chat, a chatting shit about other things and see if we'll get that going. Yeah, just about, just about Pokemon Go PvP. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll just have, like, a, a good hour-long session about uh, about Pokemon Go PvP, but I, I noticed Ash is rubbing his hands together and uh, and, and ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> let's let's hear about your picks, because I'm excited about this one. Uh, my, my pick is Glagar. Yep. I pick it in honor of one of my friends here in Peru that is retired. Scumbrera. Oh, yeah. And well, I pick Liger. Why? Because that nice slash and uh, plus, uh, plus wing, wing attack and as fast move can deal very well against some fighters uh, the top of the meta right now yeah. that are Wing C, uh, can win against Flygo, yeah. have good matchups. Uh, can we against Chestnut King Mountain and with some turns in advantage can beat Snorlet? And his, That's matchup, good and his matchup against Simino is good with the Nuzlash. And if you get the boost, it can flip <laughs> everything with the boost. Can that a lot we saw that a lot with Primeape in the in Vortex. Yeah. Oh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't I'm even want to talk about it. I'm I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you've uh, lost at least a couple of games because of the Night Slash boost. Uh, yeah. I've I've been in the in the unfortunate situation of still losing a game whilst I've had Night Slash boost. So you know it's it could be worse. I think yeah. I've got I think I've got four boosts this whole month, well, and they were separated into two games. Both of which I had already won. My, my well, worst, my worst game against a prime was again Lord Seidel from Germany. Yeah. When that, that fucking, that when that fucking prime boost twice in a row in a back to back. What the fuck? <laughs> he was my nightest was I've full HP. That, that I. That, that prime was like less than 50% of life and I was like, okay, I saved Relantor for Gyarados, this could work still, I can win. Yeah. I want she Brutal, isn't it? But nice slash boost. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Other about nice slash shield boost. So oh I think God. I think we know why you're why you're picking Gligar and it's because of the Night Slash <laughs> yeah. boost. <laughs> yeah. I like in fairness it. here, I used I used Gligar in the Toxic Cup. Um, everybody was using Gliscor, but I, I love Gligar. I just prefer it all all the way. Um, and it's honestly, I I think it's a fantastic Pokemon. It's a great safe swap, um, which I think is a lot of what we've done here, uh, with the exception of uh, Whimsicott. We've been talking a lot. Just oh, this is a really safe swap. Um, mm. and Whimsy is as well. Whimsy can if be a good safe swap. But runs across the Lord Blaziken and they're at swap. 
spot and <laughs> I think Talon Flame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Talon Flame is Talon Flame is rip. We, we, yeah. We've not we've not Talon Flame clearly. Um, the only problem with Glagor is the ice types. Yeah, but so you can damage. you can go with ah uh, well. Well, everyone will go with that silent flame in the back <laughs> for that situation. But you will have the two uh, flying types that can have a little problems against Lantern. Yeah. So you can, if you're kind of squishy, you can try to go with a Furton or maybe a, a Tang Road, which Mofset can deal with. Kind of beat with energy can rock slide can is a rock slide. nuts move. And yeah. it's, I always forget that Tangrowth has rock slide until yeah. I've, <laughs> I've clicked do not shield and I go, I've forgotten again, haven't I? That's its, that's its calling card, Tangrowth. I mean, it's yeah. the girl side that can rock slide. That's that's kind of how I always remember it. I so. would probably go Tangrowth from from tier one. Yeah. Uh, his movesets can deal a lot of damage to. Most of the tiers. But it's gonna it, it, Tangrowth would struggle against Glygar. So if you've got a Tangrowth problem, Glygar Glygar's your answer. Um yeah. what are you what are you looking at running as the third move? Are you looking at Dig or Aerial Ace? Sorry, uh, I keep no, on return. return. Don't forget don't or, or, sleep on return. Sorry, sorry, or return. We did discuss this earlier. <laughs> I I really prefer Air Slash okay. in this case. Uh, if I want uh, at a ground type move like Zeke, I prefer to go with Glazecore. It yeah. gives a better move la, than Dig, so it's okay. a waste of energy I mean, for me. In in most cases, you're wanting to be night slashing anyway, um, yeah, I, I because look, you might get the boost. I will look for the boost first of all, <laughs> but depends on the opponent Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, Glagor with the boost can change many scenarios against I remember in Toxic Cup I I was Gligar against Pillow's Wine and I got the boost <laughs> in the first in the first night last uh, I said okay I got a boost two shields and I won that match I don't know how <laughs> That, you is, just that boost, was disgusting. That, that you just disgusting. want to boost your way through. You just need to not slash your way to victory. <laughs> it's, a, it's a number Honestly, game. It's a what? A one in ten chance to, to boost. So if you throw ten I night do slashes, think so. if, you, if you throw ten night slashes, you're guaranteed a boost. <laughs> yeah, because that's how statistics work exactly. <laughs> if I throw enough night slashes at you, I will get a boost. <laughs> Yeah, for ah, sure. Will you though? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I agree with Ash's decision to go for Aerial Ace though, because with Return, as I said earlier, against Whimsicott, which is going to be a very common pick, yeah. you lose IV dependently, even if you bait the Night Slash. Yeah. And if you have Aerial Ace, then it's a pretty safe matchup. Dig, you straight up lose. Well, yeah. I mean, D Dig's not going to do anything for you, and Night Slash doesn't yeah, do anything for you. Even the wing point, attacks but... don't do enough damage. To even out the charms. That's because charm is a busted move. We've we've had yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. It's absolutely. Yeah, but Char wing attack is super effective, and you throw night slashes, and you still don't do enough. It, it the wouldn't surprise shield. me. It wouldn't surprise <laughs> me if charm gets debuffed in the same way Razor Leaf did. Um, yeah, but that's just did. one point three, uh, one third damage per yeah uh, turn less. <laughs> so that's not going to be very much if we it adds to some it adds to something you'd be surprised the, the little tweaks of it can make it viable at one Break point points will be harder yeah, <laughs> yeah. but this was the thing mm -hmm. at one point razor leaf wasn't the preferred move to go to because people didn't didn't think like that they didn't play like that um i mean to be fair before twilight razor leaf was absolutely useless yeah. And then they made it this high damaging move, and people oh, yeah. were actually looking at it. <laughs> and then I they remember, had to I remember that. after two years. Well, this is the thing; they'll, they'll they'll change it as we go. But um, so we're looking at if we look back at Glygar, what are we looking at pairing it with? So it's it's weak to obviously ice types. Are we thinking Talonflame? Because Talonflame doesn't like taking an avalanche. I can attest to that. I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> Mm. I think to be fair, fighter, fighter would be good, maybe. Yeah. To be fair, I think Glygar is also pretty afraid of water types that actually have water type moves. 
Yeah. Not like Lantern. <laughs> Shock. But for example, Rainy Cast. Yeah, I mean, we have yeah. talked about Gary. We've talked about Quaxa. We have talked about Lantern. The only water type, uh, water type attack on those is Aqua Tail and Hydro Pump. Yeah. Hey, so hey, Aqua Tail I... is the only one that you can actually throw multiple times. I did suggest but... you could go Waterfall Gyarados. I didn't say it was good, but I did suggest you could do it. It's not only not good, it's not viable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've been cast form rainy and yeah, exactly still... exactly so... rainy cast form is pretty dangerous so i think a grass type would actually help like a lot okay. um, but you that's... need a grass type that can help Tangrowth. exactly exactly that was my idea as well got to be it, Tangro. Has, it has that Tangro. rock slide for talent flame and cherry zord so and it doesn't ice, get absolutely and destroyed by them and ice no. types exactly that's, yeah no that's that's the a good problem point, is you actually. still have that weakness but with the rock slide, you can do a lot of damage. Yeah. And if we're honest, like the only real ice type that we're probably maybe gonna see is Frostlass. Frostlass. And then yeah. maybe Tiefnong, and I think that's pretty much it. Ah, uh, the Glager can beat Frostlass if he got Yeah, because of Night Slash energy. Is effectiveness. I think I think people will be boost. relying on I think people will be relying on Ice Punch on Hypno, maybe. Um yeah, maybe. Night Slash on uh, Night Slash on Hypno, it, it doesn't like to take them, not after, especially not after a boost, but even even before that, it doesn't like to take them, so, yep. no, that's fair. Yeah. Like Primeape uh, against Hypno, as we've seen this whole one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's horrible. I've Plus, been yeah. having a look at this, uh, maybe using Gliscor, I've not looked too much at Glygar, but again, what I think they have to do in the favor is they're a good swap, they can beat the fighters, and they've also got Night Slash for the Hypno. Uh, I keep going on about this Hypno matchup, I think it could be very important. So, yeah, no, that, that, that is very fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, your battles on Hypno is going to be the most common Pokemon, so... Well... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, most, it's gonna be a big usable, threat. Most usable yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in fairness here, I, I'd be looking at Gligar over Gliscor almost any day. Um, partially just because the, the reason you go with Gliscor normally is Earthquake. Yep. Um, but Gligar actually wins that matchup, if I recall. Yeah, because it's way tankier than Gliscor. Yeah, yeah. I think. Gligar wins again Gliscor. Um, but that's, so, I mean, I, I'd always want to be picking that one over the other one, you know what I mean? Um, mm. you, you get worst scenario against Steels, um, but you can build your team to protect around that. Um, how, how many steals are we going to see aside from maybe Probo? Probo Pass is the, not the one big. I'm thinking, but to be yeah. honest, Probo Pass isn't going to have a great time dealing with Gliscor. Empoleon. Yeah, the other oh, yeah, thing that... Empoleon with water. Oh, yeah. The other thing Gliscor has oh, right. going for it. There we have say... a water type fast move. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's, fin let's, let's yeah, yeah. finish. Uh, the other thing Gliscor has going for it is it's a flying type that can deal with Lantern. I think that's very important because okay. yeah, uh, no, that with is the amount of Lantern you're going to see, you uh, you resist, you basically you're resisting the the electric moves, and as long as you shield that Hydro Pump and you land on an Earthquake or a Dig or whatever, you're, you're looking good. So how does Gligar do against uh, Lantern? Just mm. out of curiosity, if it doesn't run yeah. Dig, not good. No, not good. Dig. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a reason why. Um, looking in the looking in the ones, um, oh, sorry, looking in the twos, lantern, lantern. Well, no, lan lantern quite happily edges it on all of them. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's with a couple of baits in the twos. If they're going straight hydro pump, it's probably a bit different. And and it is bait dependent. It's not bait dependent. It is boost dependent. A, a single night slash boost will will flip it from being quite bad to being quite good quite quickly. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe it's it's it is a bit better to have Gliscor if you're expecting to see a lot of lanterns. But if you're expecting to see Gliscor, it, it's probably better to run Gligar. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I found it pretty funny earlier in the My PvP Academia stream. They said double flyer would be very tough because of all the pro pass and lanterns, and I was like, well, yeah, but Gliscor is also a flyer, and it beats both of those yeah. pretty easily. <laughs> so that crown type, like. It makes you forget that it is a flyer, but in the end, it is one. It even has wing attack as its best and prioritized fast move. It's horrible luck when you lock in a fighter and they bring out a Gliscor or a Gligar, and you're just like, okay, yeah. I've got to deal with this now. That's a headache. I mean, 
Um, Hitmon Top has Stone Edge. Uh, Hitmon Chan may have Ice Punch. Ice Punch, yeah. So it's not it's not horrible, but it's not great either because you will get farmed down. Yeah, I mean, they probably just shield once and go, okay, I'm happy wing attacking you down. Yep. Just unload Night Slashes on the next Pokemon. <laughs> So, and then fishing for the boost, let's go. I mean, yeah, I, I think, in fairness, if any of us are running Gligar, we're, we're all fishing for the boost, aren't we, really? It's just what, it's I'm just what you do. I'm not going to run Gligar. It's, it's a but plus. if you did... <laughs> if I did, I would be running Gliscor, actually, because Gliscor is one of my favorite ground-type Pokemon. So just for the flavor, I would still go for Gliscor. Right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, oh, all right, well, I will go Gligar, so yeah. I don't, I, I, I'm I don't just... care of your Gliscor. I'm a staunch Gligar fan. I'm a staunch Gligar fan. I do, I do love it. Um, but it's, it's done very well for me in the past. But yeah, all right. We'll, I uh... still have not build. <laughs> Shiny so Gligar, I will bring. Have an You've got an opportunity to try it out this month. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do from there. But there we go. We've, uh, we've managed to go through everybody. Uh, we've had a, a good chat about everything. We're feeling quite positive about the method to come, the month to come. I'm sure yeah. we're gonna we're gonna see each other in the in the Gym Breakers World Cup. I'm sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I mean, seventy five percent of us are referees slash staff. Yep. <laughs> Ilya is always complaining. Uh, always, always, Ilya. Always. always. <laughs> what about what about now, what am I complaining about? Oh, He's never happy with uh, with our decisions. We'll, we'll we will uh, will not mention who you're complaining about. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, anyway, right. We'll uh, we'll move we'll move on from that, and uh, yeah. Other than that, have a lovely day. We'll uh, we'll end it here. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.